एस चांद प्रेजेंस एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एज पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम still finding it difficult to assemble the two components together this difficulty will be cleared by the end of this video hello everyone welcome to s chand academy i am anmol bhatia and in today's video we'll be learning about the basics of fitting process this is the first part of the video so let's get started if you want to have the detailed conceptual clarity on the topic you can refer to the book by s chand publishing the link of the book is there in the description box below so this is the first part of the video uh, which is basics of fitting and this is the topic in the course manufacturing practices so what is fitting process so fitting is basically a process in which you assemble the mating parts and these parts are being manufactured in the machine shop the tools that uh, have been used in the fitting shop are as follows so majorly we have six types of tools that are used number 1 is the holding tool <coughs> number 2 is the marking tools then uh, the measuring tools the cutting tools the finishing tools and the striking tools we'll understand all these tools one by one so let us start with the holding tools initially so as the name suggest these are the workpiece holding devices and these devices are used to hold the components between the jaws and these jaws can be fixed jaw and a movable jaw so one jaw is fixed and another jaw is the movable jaw so if i uh, tell the classification of the work holding tools so we have these categories which are namely the bench wise the pipe wise hand wise and the tool makers wise so let us have a clarity on these uh, major classification of the holding tools so the first one is the bench wise as you can see in the figure the bench wise is basically a holding tool that is used to hold the specimen and there uh, the specimen is being held in between the two jaws the figure is being taken from the book by s chand publishing here you can see that <coughs> the bench wise has a fixed jaw and a movable jaw so in between the two the work piece is held and these this handle is rotated so that this jaw comes in contact with the work piece similarly we have the pipe wise as the name suggest this is not used for the rectangular jobs rather this type of wise is used for the circular or the cylindrical jobs so this is used for the cylindrical jobs here also it has the movable jaw and the pipe is placed in between the two the this screw is being uh, rotated with the help of the handle and the moving jaw comes in contact with the work piece then you have the hand wise as the name suggest it is hand held device and it is used to hold the work piece between the jaws so we can keep the work piece in between the two jaws and then we can tighten or we can uh, do other type of stuff with <clears throat> with this type of the holding device so majorly we keep or we hold this type of device in our hand and that is there in between the two jaws then we have tool makers wise so the tool makers wise is a screw driven movable jaw for applying the clamping force so here <clears throat> we have a screw which is there to uh, apply pressure on the movable jaw so there is a handle that keeps the screw in the forward direction when we rotate the handle the screw comes in the forward direction and this holds the particular uh, job that we want to hold so this is another example of the fourth 
category of the holding tool. So, so far we understood about the bench wise, pipe wise, hand wise and the tool makers wise. Coming to the second category which is the marking tool. As the name suggests marking tools are used to mark the dimensions on the surface. So, <clears throat> these marking tools are used to mark the dimensions on the surface of the workpiece and category wise if I talk so these are uh, certain categories which are scribber, a uh, dot punch and a center punch. If we look at the classification, if we look at the definition of the scribber, so scribber is basically a steel tool and that is used to scribe or mark the lines on the metal workpiece. As you can see in the diagram it has a pointed end. So this pointed end is used to scribe the line on the surface of majorly a metal or the sheet metal that we want to mark upon. Then we have a dot punch. A dot punch looks like this and the figure has been taken from the book by S. Chan Publishing. What happens here, uh, this dot punch is used to specify the path of the cutting. So firstly the marking is done with the help of the scribber and with the help of this dot punch the path is being made by uh, hammering this with the help of the dot punch. Then we have the center punch. The center punch is somewhat similar to the dot punch but the only difference is it has a conical end and that conical end is having the cone angle of 118 degree. So <clears throat> this is used to mark the locations of the uh, drilled holes. So what happens whenever we are drilling uh, or on the surface so what happens the drill generally moves so in order to have uh, a base so that the, the drill goes perfectly into the hole so we initially punch the hole with the help of center punch and then the drilling operation is carried out. So we covered this second topic which is the marking tool in which we covered the scribber, dot punch and the center punch. Now coming to the third category of the tools we have the measuring tools. So as the name suggests measuring tools are used to measure the dimensions of the surface that we want to either uh, assemble together. So measuring tools as the name suggests are used to measure any components with respect to the dimensions. And there are certain components which are the steel rule or the measuring tape, a surface plate is there or a divider, a tri-square, inside caliper, outside caliper, the height gauge, vernier caliper or the micrometer. So let me uh, clarify or let me just show you some of the uh, tools that we have. So this tool that you are seeing is the measuring tool and that is called as a steel rule. So steel rule we majorly use in the fitting shop in order to measure the dimensions. Then we have this caliper which is the inside caliper so as to measure the inside uh, diameter of the, the hole or the cylinder. And then we have the outside caliper which has the claws or these legs in a specific, they are made in a specific manner so that they comes in connection with the cylindrical dia or the outside dia that we want to measure. So here this is used for the ID which is the internal dia and this is used for the OD which is the outside dia. And uh, there also a specific provision in which we can use it with the help of uh, a normal uh, uh, scenario or we can use a screw in order to tighten it. So spring type, spring type it is there and this is the ordinary one. Micrometer, vernier caliper and height gauges are the instruments which are used to specifically record the dimensions and a, um, and a surface plate. Surface plate is a kind of uh, a plate which is uh, cuboidal in nature and uh, that surface plate is made up of cast iron with excellent surface so that the markings or measurements can be done uh, on the object by placing it on the surface plate. 
So these instruments we have learnt uh, in the fitting shop which are the holding tools, marking tools and the measuring tools. In the next part of the video we will be learning about these tools namely the cutting tools, the finishing tools and the striking tools. We come to the end of the first part of the video of the topic basics of fitting in which we have learnt some tools which can be used in the fitting shop. In the next part of the video we will be learning about the other categories of the tool that can be used in the fitting shop and also we will learn about the fitting operations that can be done in the fitting shop. For conceptual clarity you can refer to the book by S. Chand Publishing. The link of the book is there in the description box below. If you find the video interesting like share subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon for future updates. Thank you. All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.